Dakota, if you don't mind, we'll just go ahead and leave Sean's explanation of the four main components in there. All right. Um, you, yes, sir. Yeah. And don't forget to ask me questions if you see me forget something. Okay. okay, you ready? All right, my name is Mr. Taro, and now I'm going to show you how to do a pump down in the system. And the reason that we would do a pump down is that, let's just say, you have a leak in your lines or you need to replace your metering device. Let's just say you have a bad uh, filter dryer that's, that's clogged up and you want to replace it. Um, today, let's just replace a filter dryer. So what we're going to do is we're going to hook our manifold gauges up to the suction side on the low, low pressure side. And we are going to go to the liquid side. And on the, on the high pressure side, we want to with the system not running, we want to see the same pressure on both sides. So we've got, we've got basically 70 pounds of pressure on the suction, 70 pounds of pressure on the liquid right now. So the system is a little bit on the weak side. And this is an R22 system. For us to get all the Freon out of this side of the system and pumped down into the condenser, we are going to have to front seat our service valves. And when I say front seat, that means that it's just like an on and off valve on your kitchen faucet, except it's going to be, in this case, an Allen wrench. And you're going to turn it clockwise until it's all the way down to the stop on both the liquid line and the suction line. And the reason that we're going to do that is because the liquid line is going to stay shut so it, can, so it holds all the Freon in. At this point, we're going to crack the suction side open so that when we start the compressor, it is going to be able to suck all the Freon out of the system and pump it into the compressor or the condenser coil. And so let's just say I have front seated both valves. I have cracked the suction open and then I've got power on the system. My disconnect is still on. And so I want to run the compressor and watch my gauges. As my gauges come down to zero, I want to go ahead and front seat that suction valve the rest of the way. When I front seat the suction valve the rest of the way, it has stored all the pressure inside the condenser coil. So basically, we have just turned that condenser coil into a recovery tank while we do this. All right, this uh, filter dryer has a flare fitting on it. It's a mechanical connection. And so, of course, we buy another one that is a flare component, we, re we pull this one off, we put the new one in, and the, f and the worst thing that we can have in the system, once again, is air in the lines. When we pulled that out, the, the lines were full of air. And air, as you know, holds moisture. Moisture is what will kill a system. And so we want to, to pull a vacuum on this system and just make sure that there's no air in. But the first thing that we want to do before we pull a vacuum is to make sure that we don't have any leaks on our fittings because the worst thing in the world is to have a leak when we let all that Freon back into the system and lose all that Freon and have to go buy it again. Uh, especially this is an R22 system that is really expensive Freon right now. So we want to ensure that we don't have any leaks. And one of the, one of the ways that I do that is this is an electronic leak detector, and this is nitrogen. We can put an inert gas like nitrogen in these lines and pressurize them and check it. But the only way this leak detector is going to work is if we put a little bit of Freon in also. And by EPA code, R22 has a little chlorine in it, but it's legal to put a trace charge of R22 in the system first and then go ahead and hook our gauges up our service line up to the nitrogen bottle and pressurize the system. Now on a nitrogen bottle, just like oxyacetylene, we have a regulator and, and by cold we have to have a regulator on these high pressure tanks so that we can safely regulate the amount of pressure that we put out. And to do that, 
We're, we are going to back our diaphragm up like we did in the soldering and brazing tanks, the oxyacetylene. We're gonna open our valve, I'll do just a little bit, and we'll turn clockwise on the regulator, and let's just say we're gonna put 100 pounds of pressure in. Now watch my gauge as I pressurize it up, you'll see it increasing. And I can, I can raise that to 100 pounds, Go ahead and open my valves on my manifold gauges and that will put the nitrogen into the system. And when I equalize out at 100 pounds, I can detect the leaks. If we didn't have a leak before, there's no reason to really spend a lot of time on any other fittings except for the ones that you worked on. And if I had a small leak detected, the electronic leak detector doesn't necessarily show you exactly where it is. So we like to use a liquid soap leak detector on top of that, and I can spray that, that fitting, and you can actually see exactly where that leak is because it'll start bubbling up right there. <coughs> Take the nitrogen out, tighten it up a little bit more, do whatever it takes when you're comfortable with it, put a little trace of R22 in, put 100 pounds of nitrogen in, leak check it again, no leaks, we're good to go. And now we have to get all the nitrogen out, which you can just do by backing your nitrogen tank regulator off, closing your tank, and bleeding the nitrogen out of the system right there. Okay, and since it's an inert gas, the EPA doesn't care how much nitrogen you put into the air, it's not gonna hurt anything. Okay, now, We have our gauges closed. We have already found out that we didn't have any leaks. Now we want to pull a vacuum on the system. And when we pull a vacuum on the system, we'll use a vacuum pump and a micrometer. A micrometer will show us the depth of a recovery. And when we hook it up and start that recovery machine, or that vacuum pump, we are actually going to start pulling a vacuum on that system and if we can get our micrometer down to 450, 400 microns, we are guaranteed that there's no moisture in the system because what that has done, as you know, water boils at 212 degrees at 14.7 pounds, but when we pull a vacuum all the way down to 450 microns, we have spoiled any, any moisture or any water that's in the system. We cause it to boil just like we were adding heat to it. So when it boils, that it's turned into a gas and now that vacuum pump can just blow it out into the air. When that happens, we go ahead and close our gauges off. We make sure that we, we are still continuing to have a deep vacuum. So I recommend that you go and clean equipment, spend a little bit of time talking to the homeowner, checking the return air filters, come back and make sure that you're still in a deep vacuum. If you are, you're guaranteed that there's no leaks in the system. If that's the case, then all you have to do is just start back seating your two valves and it'll take all that Freon back into the system safely, turn the thermostat back on and stop again, wait a little while, make sure that your pressures are good and then you can, you can uh, call the job good. Uh, one of the best things that we do, just like I showed in the classroom, is we wanna check the temperature on this evaporator line right here and we are checking superheat, so we wanna check the temperature here after it has run for a while, and then we are going to look at our gauge on the suction line again. If that temperature, leaving the evaporator coil again was 50 degrees, and we have on R22 about 65 pounds of pressure or so, 61.5 pounds of pressure, it shows right on here, the temperature pressure chart shows that it's about 35 degrees. So you subtract the 35 from the 50 and you've got a 15 degree superheat, okay? And you know that the system's running good. Take your, take your gauges off, make sure you put your service caps back on nice and tight and so it doesn't leak, okay? <clears throat>